Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I would like to talk about uh, scanning electrochemical cell microscopy architecture for making uh, microsecond resolution and stochastic collision electrochemistry. First of all, I would like to make a point about uh, bulk electrochemistry versus single uh, nano anti electrochemistry, because conventional uh, base electrochemical approaches normally use a microscale amount of active material right, to make an electrode, like in milligrams. And in case of studying nanomaterials, this implies that many of those nano entities that are in the material are measured simultaneously. Therefore, the electrochemical response is average, it's an average of all those entities. And this might obscure some information about the sample heterogeneity and also the exact relation between the nanostructure and the electrochemical activity. So the key to resolve this problematic is to uh, develop techniques that restrict the electrochemical measurement to just one single entity by time. Those electrochemical techniques can provide much more fundamental insights into the electrochemistry at the nanoscale, as well as utility information about the heterogeneity. One of the most successful cases uh, in doing so, uh, it's uh, conducting stochastic collision electrochemistry. In those, uh, the nano entities uh, are dispersed in solution and just by free diffusion, uh, they will eventually collide with a microelector that is placed inside the solution. And so just by making the contact, uh, they can catalyze or produce an electrochemical response. This technique is pretty useful uh, because it's very simple to implement and it can provide high resolution, but especially high throughput, which means that with just a few seconds, we are able to measure hundreds of thousands of those single entities, providing simultaneously robust statistic and working at single entity level. So uh, here is an example of stochastic electrochemistry reported by Professor White, and we see a current trace that shows the electrochemical signal generated by a single nanoparticle that by free diffusing collides multiple times over the surface of an electrode. So the current trace uh, generated uh, shows multiple peaks that are in the peak one pair regime and they last for microseconds to milliseconds, which means it's a pretty tiny current in a very short time. And these type of signals that are very characteristic for single nano entity measurements are pretty difficult to process from an instrumentation perspective because normally the current amplifier limits the temporal resolution that we can have in those type of measurements. For instance, here in the second figure, we see how by using uh, too low or different bandwidth uh, current amplifier and using too low bandwidth completely distort the signal and all the information uh, that we initially have, it's completely lost. Therefore, the only way to assess that the signal uh, that is recorded it's representative to the Faraday process that has gone on on the surface of the electrode. It's just be using high bandwidth current amplifiers. And according to literature, this means from 100 kilohertz to above. Nevertheless, this is problematic because uh, amplifier bandwidth and amplifier scales are intimately linked. And normally with the efforts to increase the bandwidth, the current noise is also increased. So here it is an equation that tells about uh, the current amplifier dependency on noise. So the f uh, here we have the, the output noise from the current uh, amplifier, which has a term that depends on the bandwidth that we are using. And for sure, if you're looking for high bandwidth current amplifier, this will be the main contribution over the noise. Interestingly, whoop, this term also has a contribution from the input capacitance. This input capacitance refers to all those parasitic capacitance from connection cables or even from the electrochemical cell uh, that contribute to the noise. So in order to, uh, one possibility to, to perform high bandwidth measurements without having that much noise, it's by reducing this input capacitance. So this is the approach that we take for our research. And uh, what we have, it's uh, what we aim is to conduct these stochastic collision electrochemistry experiments by combining SCCM and a custom design transimpedance amplifier. So the SCCM setup has been already introduced today by McKelvey and Angwin, so I will not go into much detail into it. Just mention that we use it to form a small electrochemical cell uh, in a gold electrode pad that is just besides a current amplifier. So the distance between the, the chip that makes the current amplification and the electrode pad is just 300 uh, micrometers, 
which uh, mainly means that all the connections are pretty reduced and so the input capacitors. Here uh, is a picture of the PCB board that uh, has been designed and fabricated by our collaborators in the University of Stuttgart. And this PCB board has all the electronics needed for run the current amplifier. For sure, it has a current amplifier chip. And it also has the gold electrode pad where we land our pipette and we conduct our electrochemical measures. So we have manufactured three of those uh, current amplifiers with different bandwidth, 80 kilohertz, 250 kilohertz, and one megahertz, all of those having an amplification magnitude of uh, four nanons per volt. So here we could like to compare uh, our setup with a commercial uh, high-end current amplifier. Uh, so in the left, uh, it is displays a current trace of this commercial available current amplifier, which have an um, amplification magnitude of 10 nanoamps per volt and a bandwidth of 200 kilohertz. And uh, in blue, we see the current trace, which corresponds to the current amplifier completely unwired. Therefore, it's the, this current trace corresponds to the intrinsic noise, the minimum noise that this amplifier provides, uh, could provide. So when we add all the connections for make a two electrode cells, the noise increase uh, very significantly to the green trace that we have here. As mentioned before, this is all to all those parasitic connections uh, that came from uh, the connections. So uh, in red, uh, we have uh, the, uh, so in red, we have the, the current trace when the cell uh, it's formed. Here on the right side, uh, it is presented uh, the current trace from our custom design current amplifier uh, or setup that we combine in the SCM and the custom design current amplifier, where we have more than the double uh, of the magnification uh, of the commercial one and a slightly higher bandwidth. And as we can see in the green taste, the peak to peak noise compared to the other one. So here, just sorry, mentioned that this is with all the connections already done because in the PCB board, they're all integrated. Uh, it's much less than the commercial available and just by forming the electrochemical cell does not represent a high increase in noise. Just putting numbers into this, the open circuit RMS noise uh, for the commercial one, it's about 600 picons, by, but in our case with just a slightly higher bandwidth, it's about 90 picons. Uh, we also wanted to evaluate the effect of the electrochemical cell, uh, the, over, the formation of the electrochemical cell over the noise levels. And we see that from when we go from open circuit to closed circuit, we just increase about one picoam in the noise levels, which compared to the intrinsic noise levels of the current amplifier is pretty minimal. We also wanted to quantify which is the contribution of the forming the electrochemical cell on the input capacitance terms. So mainly we fit this equation to the input reference noise, which is a Fourier analysis of uh, the current traces that I showed you before. And by doing this fitting, it's possible to extract the input capacitance in open uh, circuit, in closed circuit, and therefore we can extract the capacitance of uh, that due to the formation of the electrochemical cell, which agrees with the capacitance expected from the double layer formation on the electrode. Finally, going into the proper electrochemistry. So this, uh, it was able to perform single nano entity measurements uh, with the setup of 100 nanometer nanoparticles when the electrode was whole at uh, one volt. And here is a current trace uh, done with an 80 kilohertz current amplifier. And we can clearly see that uh, a multiplic oxidation from the nanoparticle colliding several times with the electrode uh, with some just some magnifications. And mainly when we integrate uh, the charge produced by all those peaks, by one of those events, we obtain a similar charge from what it's expected to the all the from oxidizing the silver to silver plus. Uh, these events were recorded kind of every 20 seconds. So these are pretty tiny in time. It's a fraction of a second. So we're recording every 20 seconds, suggesting that one nanoparticle goes inside, gets completely oxidized, and every 20 seconds, another one came. We have done those measurements with the one megahertz square and amplifier. And we were, we were able to detect those signals. However, the, core, the noise to signal ratio was not as adequate. So we just have filtered it here with a Bessel filter. And it's curious because the characteristic multi-peaks that we see with the 80 kilohertz in this case is replaced by shorter peaks and long tails, uh, which might suggest the formation of silver oxide instead of a complete oxidation to silver plus, which, uh, which mechanism was reported uh, 
recently by Professor Buzang, and we attribute this to just a small calibrations difference that we already have in uh, between the different current amplifiers that we use. So just a sum up, so the integrated uh, PCB board design simplifies the wires and reduces the input capacitance, which has a relevant effect over high bandwidth current amplifications. By the use of SCCM, the input capacitance uh, contribution of the electrochemical cell is minimal. Uh, and also the, this trans impedance amplifier allows us to detect uh, single entities up to one megahertz. So I would like uh, to thank all the people that have contributed to this project and also to Trinity College for founding uh, my PhD and all this project. Thank you very much for your attention. Mm -hmm.